This is your first lesson on financial mathematics. And to start with, we're going to look at two different formulas. The first formula we're going to look at is the simple interest formula. And this is where you earn exactly the same amount of interest every single year or every single month. So the monetary value is exactly the same every year. The formula is A is equal to P in brackets 1 plus I times N. And this is what the letters stand for. So A is the final amount you will have in your bank account. P is the principal or the initial amount or the amount of money that you're going to put into your bank. I is your interest rate that you're being charged per annum or earning per annum. And you're always going to divide the number they give you by 100. So we write it as a decimal. And N stands for the number of years. Now in financial mathematics, the one agreement that will always work using simple interest is a higher purchase agreement. And this is usually used when you buy small appliances like a television or a fridge or a dishwasher. Um, they will tell you that you're going to buy it on a higher purchase agreement, which basically means you're renting the machine until you've paid it off in full. And at that point, you've purchased it, becomes your own. So usually for your small appliances, you'll use a higher purchase agreement. So they will tell you you're going to pay off exactly 400 Rand every month for the next three years, um, that sort of thing. So when your amount is exactly the same every single month, it doesn't go up and down as your interest rate changes. Let's look at an example. In this example, we've got to calculate what 750 Rand will amount to if invested at 6% simple interest for three years. And in financial maths, you should always start by writing down your formula. Now, in this formula, we want to figure out what will the A value be? How much will I have in my bank account at the end of three years? So I'm putting 750 Rand into the bank account. Now, the interest I'm being charged is 6%. And as I said, you always divide that number by 100 because percent actually means over 100. So 6 over 100 will give you 0, 0,06, and that's how you should substitute it into your formula. Then type it in exactly as you see it, and your answer will be 885 Rand. Let's look at example 2. Musa purchases a car for 95,850 Rand. He puts down a 10% deposit and repays the balance at 10,5% per annum simple interest every month over four and a half years. A, what is the total amount he has left to pay, including interest? Okay, first of all, he puts down, he is going to buy the car for 95,850 Rand, but he's going to put down a 10% deposit. So he's going to pay that right in the beginning. So he doesn't have that left to pay anymore. What he does have to still pay is 90% of 95,850 Rand. So he's putting down a 10% deposit, but he's supposed to pay 90%. So we first have to calculate that by going 90 over 100 times 95,850. So he still has to pay 86,265 Rand. But they want to know how much will he have to pay, including interest. So we're going to use our simple interest formula. And it's going to be 80,265 that, that he's taking on loan. But the interest is... 10,5%. And remember, when we put it into the formula, we first have to divide it by 100. And we write it as 0, 0,105. And then it's for four and a half years. And if we type it into our calculator exactly as we see it, we end up with 127,025 and 21 cents. Question B, how much interest will he pay over the four and a half years? His interest We'll take the total amount that he's going to owe after four and a half years, and we're going to subtract the initial amount. And that's the amount of money he pays in interest, which is a lot of money. It's almost half the price of the car. Okay, so be careful when you're actually buying something and you want to um, pay it off on a loan. It might be cheaper to actually pay cash because you end up paying an extra 40,000 Rand, which is quite a lot of money. Question C, how much will he pay each month? Well, he's going to pay it off over four and a half years. So in four and a half years, that's equal to 54 months. So you go four and a half times 12, and that's 54 months. So we're going to take his total amount that he's going to pay, which is 127,025 Rand and 21 cents, and divide it by 54. So every single month, he will have to pay 
2,352.32. The next formula that we have to look at is the compound interest formula. And for example, if you've got money in a bank and they are they charging or earning interest using compound interest? What will happen is you will earn interest and then they'll put it back into your account. So the next time they have to calculate interest, you'll have a little bit extra in your account. So the interest you will be earning will be on a bigger amount. So you actually start earning interest on your interest. So your, your investment or your savings will grow a lot quicker. The formula is A is equal to P, 1 plus I, and then the N inside the bracket just moves to an exponent. So your money starts growing exponentially. Think about it in that way. All of the letters still mean exactly the same thing. So A is the amount that you will take out at the end of the investment time or when you want to withdraw your money from the bank. P is the principal or initial amount. It's the money you put into the bank. I is your interest rate, and remember when we substitute it into the formula, we always want to divide it by 100 so that we substitute it in as a decimal. And then N is the number of years, and that will just be an exponent. Now compound interest, the one question that it is always, always used for is inflation. So in a question, if they tell you that the rate of inflation is 6%. They don't have to tell you that it will be compounded annually. We have to know that. Okay, so inflation always uses compound interest, but they don't have to specify which interest they are using when they ask us about inflation. Let's look at an example. This time Eddie invested 120,000 Rand at 9% per annum compounded annually. How much will he have in his account at the end of 12 years? So we're going to start by writing down the formula, and it's compounded, so the N is an exponent. 120,000 Rand goes in, he's earning 9% interest, so remember to substitute it into your formula, divide it by 100, and you enter it as 0, 0,09, and he will have 337,519 Rand and 77 cents. Right, we want to calculate the total interest earned in 12 years. So we're going to take the total amount at the end of 12 years, and we're going to subtract 120,000. So over the 12 years, he actually earns 217,519 Rand and 77 cents. Thanks for watching Max Maths. If you liked what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe.